Hi everyone, and welcome to today's episode of Species Shorts. For those of you who are just joining us for the first time, my name is Lindsay Barone. And today we are going to be diving into a fossil hominin species that's a little bit of a mystery and that there's a little bit of debate about in the anthropological community. And that species, of course, is Homo antecessor. Now, Homo antecessor is one of a couple of species that all live between roughly 1.2 million years ago and about 100,000 years ago. And they are collectively sometimes referred to as the archaic Homo sapiens. So that doesn't necessarily mean that they are completely assigned to our species. So when we refer to Homo sapiens or anatomically modern humans, we're not talking about these guys. But what it does mean is that they are very, very closely related to us, not only in terms of genetics, but in terms of anatomy as well. So to start things off with for our discussion of Homo antecessor today, I'd like you all to take a good look at the fossil. Now, the first thing you'll notice about our Homo antecessor specimen is that it's a lot less complete than some of the skulls that we've looked at in this series before. But we're just gonna do our best with what we have. So let's take a good look at the face, or at least what's present of the face. Can't really see much, but you know, look at the eyebrow area, look at the forehead, see what you can of the cheekbones. You might notice that those are a lot more slender than some of the cheekbones we've looked at before. And then of course, here are the teeth. We can't let a, a session go by without talking about teeth, right? Um, so here's one of the jaws where you can really start to see that widening, more parabolic shape to the tooth row, really becoming um, very visible with Homo antecessor. So, what do we know about this species? Well, we know that Homo antecessor as a group lived between 1.2 and about 800,000 years ago. So they were right on the cusp, right at the beginning of this archaic Homo sapien group. Homo antecessor is almost exclusively found in Spain. Um, in particular, there are two sites that are really well known for having Homo antecessor fossils. Um, and those are um, Grandolina and Cima del Elefante. So those are our two big antecessor sites. Um, Grandolina is probably the most famous of the sites that have this fossil. Um, and that is in part because not only do we have Homo antecessor found at that site, but we also have Homo heidelbergensis which is another fossil hominin that we're going to be talking about on Friday. Um, there are hundreds of animal bones there, and there are hundreds of stone tools there as well. All of this is found in the same fossil context, which indicates that there was likely some interaction between Homo antecessor and Homo heidelbergensis. Now, at this particular site, there are 80 hominin fossils assigned to these two species. Um, mostly fragmentary, mostly small pieces, um, but there are at least six individuals represented in the fossil context. The stone tools that are found at this site are typically classified as being um, old one style tools. So you might remember when we talked about Homo habilis last week, they made those really basic types of Oldowan tools. That's what we find at Grandolina as well. The second antecessor site is Cima del Elefante. Um, this is in the same region of Spain. It really only seems to have Homo antecessor fossils. It's a little bit more sparse. There aren't as many individuals found at this particular site. Now, what do we know based on the fossil finds of Homo antecessor about what these guys actually looked like? Well, 
we do know that they were starting to have some very modern human-like characteristics. So one of the things that we can see is that we're starting to have basically no facial prognathism. So another way of saying that is the face is getting really flat. And you can kind of see in profile, this is pretty up and down. It only very slightly sticks out when you get down to the maxilla. That's exactly like what we would expect to see in a modern human face. So that type of characteristic is appearing already in Homo antecessor. Um, in terms of brow ridges and the forehead and just generally the top of the skull, these guys do still have a sort of large brow ridge. So this eyebrow area, that bony eyebrow area, um, it's a little bit bumpier, a little bit larger than what we would expect to see in an anatomically modern human. So that's a little bit of a more archaic trait that we see in Homo antecessor. Another thing that's a little bit more archaic or more, more like the older hominins is that it doesn't really have much of a forehead. Now, we haven't talked about this much at all, but one of the things, especially when you look at some of these hominin fossils directly next to a human skull, is that the older hominins don't have a forehead. Meanwhile, if you look at yourself, you probably have a pretty large, pretty vertical forehead. And in fact, I've got a human skull here for you to compare with. So here's our human with this big, huge forehead. And here's antecessor. And this is the top of the skull right here. So basically, right after the eyebrows, it goes into the top of the skull and there's not this vertical rise to the forehead. So that's a little bit more of an archaic trait as well. However, um, we know that these were obligate bipeds, just like the rest of our genus. Um, we also know that they're starting to have larger brains. Um, the average Homo antecessor brain size is between 1,000 and 1,100 cubic centimeters. Um, which is very close to what we would expect to see in a modern human. The average human brain size is about 1,350 cubic centimeters. So we're getting very, very close to an anatomically modern human brain size, even though these guys are living on average about a million years ago. Um, one other thing that's kind of interesting about this species that we haven't talked much about yet, but we'll talk about more with the Neanderthals, is that there's some anatomical evidence that they in fact have a feature called an occipital bun. And an occipital bun, if you look at a Neanderthal skull, and you're going to get to look at one of those next week, um, but basically it's this area in the back of the head that sort of sticks out. It, it's like a protrusion in the base of the skull. So if there were an occipital bun um, on a human skull, it would be back here. And it's this weird sort of lumpy thing that looks like it sticks out further than the rest of the skull. This is something that we see in Neanderthal skulls. This is also something that we see in Homo antecessor. Now the function of the occipital bun is a little bit of a mystery. Um, anthropologists kind of go back and forth about what this might be for. Um, some people have hypothesized that maybe it's just sort of a counterbalance because Neanderthals um, are known for having these big, heavy, forward, or rather anterior faces, so like the front of the skull, um, and that some people have argued that maybe that this occipital bun in the back is a counterbalance, so it basically keeps the head upright. Um, I don't know if that's necessarily the case, but it is an interesting idea that somehow the skull has evolved this capacity to counterbalance itself and keep everything more or less level. Another thing that I think is kind of interesting to speculate wildly about when it comes to Homo antecessor has to do with what they were eating. Now, at these sites in Spain, there have been some Homo antecessor fi finds, some fossil bones found that show evidence of cut marks. We've talked
talked a little bit about cut marks on bones, um, I think. Um, and basically when you see a cut mark, it indicates that something was intentionally butchering an animal, or in this case, a hominin. Now, what are the implications of flesh being only cut off of a hominin bone? Well, there are really two potential explanations. One is that maybe it was some sort of funerary rite, so maybe this was done as a way to prepare a body for death. Or two, is that maybe in fact this group was a group of cannibals and that they were removing the flesh from bone to actually eat it. Now, there's no real way to test for this. Um, it's just something that people have noticed when studying the bones that there's, there are these cut marks on them. So something somehow was removing the flesh for some reason. And I should say too that cut marks from stone tools are very distinct they're very different than say, a tooth mark or a claw mark from an animal chewing on a bone. Um, so basically this raises this idea that for some reason, Homo antecessor was doing something to members of its own community to maybe remove some of that flesh. So I'll let you guys dig into that a little bit more if you're interested in that topic. It's a little bit grim for a Wednesday, um, but it is something that I, I think raises a lot of interesting questions. Now the last thing I just briefly want to mention about Homo antecessor is that the oldest known hominin genetic sequence that we have actually comes from this species. And actually it was just announced not even a month ago. Um, so it was April 2020, there was a, a paper that was published announcing some genetic sequence that had been obtained from a Homo antecessor tooth um, that was 800,000 years old. Looking at this genetic sequence, it shows that Homo antecessor is very closely related to Homo sapiens, also very closely related to the Neanderthals, as well as the Denisovans. And the Denisovans are a group of somewhat mysterious hominins that were living in Siberia. Um, we're not really sure what species even they belong to. So they just sort of kind of get called Denisovan and that's how they're discussed right now. I'm sure when more fossils are found of the species, more studies have been done, we might be able to classify them a little bit better. But for now, they're a, a big question mark. So this is really cool because when we can get ancient DNA like this, it provides confirmation to what we know about these ancient fossils just by looking at their anatomy. So anytime we can get some pieces of genetic information to back up hypothesized relationships between species, that's a really important piece of information that we can use to better understand not only hominin evolution, but understand why we are the way that we are today. All right, so that is where we're gonna stop for today. Thank you for joining me. If you have any questions that haven't been addressed, please put them in the comments on the video. Otherwise, I will see you on Friday for our discussion of Homo heidelbergensis.